I'm Sean Wood, Clinical Manager with Metro West, and I'm here with Dr. Ritu Sani, Medical Director for Washington County, Clackamas County, Lake Oswego, e Lake Fire. Oswego Fire. Any other titles that I'm missing? That's fine. Okay. That's plenty. Right. I don't okay. have as many titles as Craig Warden, though. Oh, right, right. Okay. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? I think we're talking about strokes. Stroke. All right. Not so really we have some minor changes, some new names, and uh, looks like we're going to review CSTAT. Yeah, we've kind of thought that the CSTAT stuff has been a little confusing, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and then uh, we've had a couple of people ask for what are the, what are the um, CSTAT capable places and stroke capable, so we'll review those things too. Okay, sounds good. So let's get right into it. So, a little bit of a name change. Previously in our 2017 protocols, we called our stroke scale the LA Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale. And this year, we've renamed it the Portland Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale because we we got to put a bird on it right? that's right pop, pop a bird there should be a bird right on the uh, on the protocol itself the previous protocol was based on the los angeles scale we've added our new a new twist to it this year which is this um part about speech and so it's kind of different from any other published stroke scales and so we kind of called it our own thing um so yeah okay so i'm on scene assessing a patient and I'm going through the, the steps. Are they 45 years or older? Right. Do they have a seizure history? Uh, what's their CBG? Things like that. Right. And then I start looking at, is there any kind of weakness on, or a facial mm -hmm. droop, um, arm weakness, right. things like that. They're passing all these tests, mm -hmm. yet I start speaking with them and things aren't making sense. Word salad things like that. Is this what we're talking about? This is about? exactly what we're talking about. And we've had a couple of cases where the patient's only presentation for an acute stroke was a speech problem. Primarily what's called an aphasia. Mm -hmm. So either an expressive aphasia or a receptive aphasia. And the way I always describe this is we've all seen the patient who kind of knows what's going on, is trying to respond to you. They are trying to say the words, but they get super frustrated because they don't know what, they can't get them out. And that is an expressive aphasia. That is a stroke. And even though the NIH stroke scale on that, which is the main stroke scale that the hospital uses. The big long one. The yes. big long one yes. that's uh -huh. crazy long that even the doctors don't use, just right. the nurses right. use. That's a relatively low score. Being unable to speak, it's kind of a big deal. And so our stroke centers treat these aggressively. And uh, as a result of looking at a few of these cases, we met with the stroke centers and they said they would like these activated as stroke alerts. Okay. And so we added that piece at the, at the bottom, but basically you ask the patient to speak a simple phrase, like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It never rains in Oregon. Right, Oregon football, never mind. Oh, uh, hey, um, hey, hey, hey. But, <laughs> but you ask them to speak a simple phrase, and if they're unable to speak it back, either because they are un unable to speak appropriately, correctly, because they can't get the right words out, or they seem to not understand you, that the comprehension piece, then that would be a speech-only stroke. Okay. So let's say somebody's having difficulty speaking. They pass all the other tests, so now... In my mind, I have an acute stroke. Correct. So then I move on to our regular CSTAT evaluation. Right. Correct? The CSTAT, the whole question with the CSTAT is, is there a big stroke? Mm -hmm. We've identified this patient has a stroke. We're going to enter them in our stroke session. Our stroke, we're going to enter them as a stroke alert somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, is this a jijumbo stroke? That's an official... Jijumbo. That's an official word. Um, it's a medical bad. word, jijumbo. But... What that means is that they may be qualified for a more aggressive management or treatment. And so we want those patients to go to a, a more specialized center. Okay. And, and we've had a little bit of confusion this year about the CSTAT positive, both, by the way, in the EMS side, but I work at a stroke center and, that does these, and the nursing staff has sometimes been confused. And so we felt like it was important to just reiterate that uh, First, the first test, you know, that you mm -hmm. just did, that's a stroke. That mm -hmm. patient needs mm -hmm. to go to a stroke center. And then the next test is to figure out if they have a jumbo stroke and whether they need to go to a, a more capable center. 
and it's not definitive if CSTAT's positive Correct. that they're having a large vessel occlusion. Correct. It just is a screening tool to help catch potential. Right, and stroke. some patients who are CSTAT negative may have a large vessel occlusion, and a lot of patients who are CSTAT positive may not have a large vessel occlusion. They may have a bleed, and a bleed is not going to be taken care of the same way, but it's still, and they're not going to go to a cath lab, but it's still a big, big stroke. So this is as close as we can get without having CT vision. Right. CT and uh, CT, uh, CT and, angio, and which there yeah. are a couple places now that do those pre-hospitally. They have CT and CT angio capable. I, I was wondering if your glasses. No. There, are these CT capable <laughs> the, the glasses? The Nike glasses are not okay. CT capable. Okay. That's okay. correct. All right. So can we just, just to remind people what the CSTAT is. Yes. It's kind of, I think of it as like kind of two ways to win, right? Because you have to get two points. The first mm -hmm. way is if the patient has a, di a gaze deviation. So if they're so me looking up. That's just like here. that. Yeah. Weakness on this uh, side? No, I think it's weakness on the other side. Are you sure? No, I don't remember. <laughs> well, let, let's look. Look, it is the other way. It's right on the slide. So a gaze deviation away from the side of weakness. Okay, so if I'm weak on my right side and I'm looking off of, over to here, the left, I get two points? You get two points. Two points. And okay. then you win. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. you, gaze deviation, you win, and you're C-stat positive. All right. So next, if I only have arm weakness, yet I have a wavering level of consciousness, or I'm not able to or say my name or where I'm at, simple questions. Right. We ask you two level of consciousness questions uh, and ask you to follow two commands. And if you can't, uh, if you miss one of those, so it says, one, ask two level consciousness questions and ask two follow commands. And if you miss one of each, or to be quite honest, if they're just seem globally altered, mm -hmm. um, those, that's one point and mm -hmm. severe weakness on one side is another point. Okay. So the way you win is either is to, and that, if you're down that pathway, the way you win is to have both a severe weakness and, and altered, altered, altered level, level of consciousness. consciousness. Exactly. Gotcha. And that's two points, and then you end up being C-STAT positive. So then w I have a C-STAT positive stroke. Where am I going to go? You need to go to a place that can do intervention. They have to have a cath lab that does strokes. And there are six places in the Tri-County area that do that. Okay. We have a lot of hospitals here, but the six pl there are only six places that go to the cath lab with strokes that say that they will do that for us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When we met with them last year, when we put this in place, that was the key. They have to be 24 seven capable and they have to be willing to share their, their data with us, which we're gonna hopefully in the next few months start to accumulate, see what happened in this first year Great. and kind of put it all out there and then make sure all of our personnel know. But the six places, and these are just alphabetical order okay. in, the, in the region, Kaiser Sunnyside is okay. capable uh, Legacy Emanuel and Legacy Meridian Park uh, are both capable of 24-7 to do these interventions. Um, OHSU, of course, is, as a level one trauma center, is 24-7 interventional capable. And then two Providence places, Providence Portland and Providence. Your shop. My shop, Providence mm -hmm. Portland, mm -hmm. and then Providence St. Vincent's are 24-7, uh, 365, capable to do 366 on a leap year capable to do these interventions for stroke. Because the idea is we don't want these patients to have to go through a transfer right. if they need this intervention right away. So just for clarification now, if I have a greater than 20 minute transport, if I'm out in rural Washington County right. or rural Clackamas County, where do I need to go? So the protocol says that if you're greater than 20 minutes out from, a, from the, uh, uh, interventional capable center, then you just go to the closest capable center. Okay. Uh, the closest stroke center. And we'll talk about what the ones that do stroke are. The reality is, I think if you're equidistant mm -hmm. from an interventional capable and a, and a stroke capable, that you should go to the interventional. Sure. Um, but the idea is if you're more than 20 minutes out, you don't bypass somebody to go right. to another place. That's the key is... Uh, but if you're within 20 minutes, you're going to bypass somebody if they're, if they're C-STAT positive. If, if you're C-STAT negative, mm -hmm. you can still go, you can go to any stroke capable center okay. in the region. And those are? Those are going to be the six, the 
interventional capable centers, plus Willamette Falls, um, Mount Hood, Kaiser Westside, Tuolity Hospital, Portland Ad, Legacy Good Sam, and then the VA is also a, a stroke capable place. Okay. Uh, the OHSU stroke team handles the VA. Gotcha. I don't know how often they get folks in directly from EMS, um, but those are. So if you have an acute stroke that's ceased that negative and you're like right next to Tuolity, that's where you should go. Sure. Or if you're right next to Willamette Falls, that's where you should go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's clear. Yeah. Clear as mud, Clear I as guess. mud, yes. <laughs> so that's, uh, I guess that's a, um, the stroke change is the addition of speech only or speech as a component. And of course the Portland Stroke scale the Portland name. Stroke Scale name. Very proud of that. And then I guess we just reviewed the CSTAT stuff. All right. Well, just a reminder for you all, protocols go in effect January 8th, 2018. Hope you all have a great year.